Okay. So I want to thank everybody uh, for coming here today. We are recording this, as I mentioned. And uh, the topic here is uh, kind of a peculiar one. It's three easy ways to be the IT hero without bringing on pesky consultants. And I want to tell you all, um, let's see. Patty, you've got the lobby. So yep. here's basically what we're going to be doing. I like to give everybody a heads up as to what we're going to cover and how we're going to be dealing with everything here. So we're really talking about this from the perspective of the internal IT person, and we'll get into some other uh, assumptions or specifics here. But we're, number one, we're going to talk about what the Achilles heel is uh, for IT uh, in the SMB world, and then how vulnerable is your IT in business uh, to interruption. And then finally, we're going to talk about how to assess the relationship between IT and management. And I know that if you attended a webinar that didn't have a sales pitch at the end, you'd be disappointed. So I don't want to disappoint you, but actually it's going to be a very, very, very small sales pitch. Probably about 90% of the content that we're going to be talking about here is really sharing our perspective, our knowledge, some tr uh, tips and tricks uh, to make your lives easier. And we'll explain why uh, as we get through this as well. So, so is this for you? Well, again, aimed at the SMB small medium business, if you're in an organization, and, and believe me, I've been there, where IT isn't appreciated, it's viewed as a cost center, it's viewed as this, uh, you know, necessary evil, uh, this is great. And, and also, if you are sitting there and you're, you don't know everything, who knows everything, but there are pieces about your IT that you're not necessarily sure of, whether it be because uh, another person in the organization has the knowledge or a vendor does or whatever. And especially for, again, the SMB groups where you're on call 24 by seven, uh, where you're the only person who knows or has access to particular information that is critical for the organization. And then it, it's really, if, if you're, and here's the thing, I'm a former CIO, I'm a former IT director, consultant, blah, blah, blah. And even when I was CIO of a manufacturing company or IT director of a municipality or whatever, I still felt like a consultant. I still felt like the whole idea I was trying to do was just to bring value and make the IT help everybody else be more productive. And one of the biggest frustrations that I've always had in those roles was when I knew there were ways to bring additional value to the organization, but either I didn't know how or I didn't know how to work with management so that they would recognize the fact that I was actually there to help and wasn't just this geek sitting in the corner with the beanie and the propeller head. Yes, geeks back then had beanie, beanies and propeller heads. By the way, at any point in time, you guys want to add some uh, uh, comments or anything, absolutely feel free. So here's the question. If you had a magic wand or, or a banana, you'd like to know where the stuff is. You'd like to know what's vulnerable. And you'd like to be part of the business side of the organization and not competing against it uh, in an adversarial situation. And unfortunately, there is no magic wand or banana, but there are some things you can do that don't involve a lot of money uh, to improve in these situations. Now, in some cases, some organizations are absolutely doing fine and wonderful on these things, in which case, if you've got some ideas or some thoughts to share, please do so, because I don't know everything. Well, what a shock. My wife may tell you that I claim otherwise. But um, one of the biggest, one of the coolest things about IT is that a lot of us do share information, share knowledge, share perspectives, and I'd love for this uh, for this webinar to be part of that as well. So who am I? Um, as I mentioned, I'm a former CIO, but I've also been a developer, a DBA, IT director, consultant, geek all over the place. I've written three books. Uh, my first book was The CEO Survival Guide to Information Technology, which should be up on uh, Audible uh, in the next in the next week or so with my voice, which just made everyone lose interest in that. And then I wrote the uh, MSP's Managed Service Provider, which is what Simplex IT does, Survival Guide to Co-Managed IT Services, because about half of our work 
involves a partnership with the internal IT departments of organizations, not replacing, but partnering and making, making the organization better through working together. And that's unusual if you've worked with managed service providers. Usually we're trying to take your job, which brings me to a third book, I Don't Want Your Job, Is Co-Managed IT Services the Right Fit for You? So, yay. Uh, I've also got a long history in computer user groups, which is a very collaborative. Uh, I used to be president of the Greater Cleveland PC User Group. We had about 1,200 members back in the 90s. And I also, I'm, I'm, I do it, used to do improv, improvisational comedy, which is, again, very cooperative. And you'll notice that all of these are about sharing knowledge. All of these are about really demonstrating how we can work together and how through working together, we can all win. You know, so it's not a, it's not a zero sum game. It's where we, we can all cooperate and work together. Then if you're gonna have a presentation, you have to have an obligatory picture. Uh, this is actually with my six grandkids. Uh, five of them are really cool. One of them's evil. So. Why am I passionate on this? Because I, I do speak a lot. Every day on LinkedIn, I post a new video. And they're not sales pitches or the like. I think today is talking about how to measure complexity in communications. Uh, and, and yesterday, I think it was inductive reasoning or something along those lines. So why do I love this stuff? Um, well, one of the values that we have from Simplex IT standpoint uh, is we're the cool guys. We like to have, you know, Everybody's got this uh, water bottle that says all of our values. We do the right thing. We're always learning, always sharing. Fingers don't point. Simplifying the complex and a couple others. Because that's what we think is our strength. That's what we bring value when we're talking to organizations. Okay. And we also think of Simplex IT as a learning hospital, meaning that all of the technicians here, we've got about a dozen of them or so, uh, all of us are always looking for ways to improve both ourselves, either through certifications, all that, but also by sharing with each other. We have learning ours all the time, uh, and you know we've got a Teams channel that just has a recording of learning ours that people can listen to and read. And then I love aha moments. I love it when I'm talking with someone and the lights go on and they get it. Better still, when I get it, when I learn stuff, because it is just such. To, to just see the twitch in terms of how people approach problems and issues can make something that seems insurmountable and turn it into something that, no, we can do this and it's easier than we think. And I'm a Superman fan, I gotta admit. So I like being the good guy too. Which gets back to, gets us back to our title, how to be the hero. Because IT, we should be the hero. We should be the ones who make things work, who make things work better and securely and good productivity and all that, not the ones who they have to call because my computer broke or because this did. It's a different approach. It's a different mentality. So what's our caveats? Because I always think there should be caveats. One, this is really for internal IT folks and small, medium businesses. Now, that doesn't mean that it may not be appropriate for, for anybody you know, because some of these are going to be commonsensical, and especially when we talk about single points of failure. Oops, spoiler. Uh, but it's one of those where the perspective of it is really going to be to the small and medium business. It's based on my 40 plus years, because I am old, of working in IT around 200 organizations or so. And I'm looking for low hanging fruit, because remember, the title is without consultants. So these are things that I think you should be able to implement in some way, shape, or form to show some kind of progress that improves your situation, your employment, your productivity, your value to your employer as the internal IT person. Okay? And then finally, I am a crotchety old geek. Uh, if you're looking for subtle and sales pitches and all that kind of fun stuff, no, nah, this is not it. Okay? But I take it just as well as I dish it out. So, with that, so what are you going to discover? Well, we're really going to focus on three things. One, duh, time to start documenting. Really? That's it? Yes. It's time to really start building documentation to support IT. We'll talk about why, and we'll get some ideas on how to start and all that. And then, how vulnerable is your IT and business to interruption? And this is not the, you have to get the firewall up or you have to get backups or you have to have, no. This is, this is a discussion for how you can identify 
where the vulnerabilities are because it is hard to solve your problems if you don't know what they are. And a lot of us found things on LinkedIn and don't you love the whole LinkedIn scenario where you know you get this connection and somebody wants to connect with you in LinkedIn and immediately sell you the solution to all your problems and they don't have the first clue who you are let alone what your problems are. So you need to know ahead of time. And then finally, and perhaps more, most subtly, how to improve the, the relationship between IT and management. And we're going to, and all of these we're going to talk about real world. We're not going to talk about here's the system that you implement. We're going to talk about ways that you can do this without throwing your to-do list into an uproar. Okay? And again, just to add, any comments, questions, anything along those lines, go ahead and, and throw them into the uh, chat. So, time to start documenting. Duh. Now, when we talk about documentation, we love to sit back and say, we'll get to it. We love to sit back and say, that's not part of, it is external to the job, it is external to the project process. And also we love to do documentation on the fly, meaning that however we wanna do documentation at this moment in time is how we'll happen to do it. And now we're getting better at it as an organization, but we're still pretty reactionary. And in a lot of cases, the documentation is done not as a process, but as a footnote. And what I mean by that is that we'll document, so we'll do a project and the pro, at the end of the project, it could be some servers, it could be you know switch upgrades or anything along those lines, we'll create that map, we'll create that document, we'll create that formatted uh, pieces of information and then it never gets updated. So it's not only a question of building the snapshot, but it's also a question of building a process where you're going to actually maintain and improve the documentation as you move forward. And the reason being is because in so many cases, in so many cases, you end up with the situation where, you know, what I call the, the worst time to learn CPR is when you're having a heart attack. The worst time to look for documentation or create documentation is when you need it. And so the question is, how well documented are you in terms of the need? So if something happened, we're gonna to get to single points of failure in a couple minutes, but if something happened where you needed to have certain levels of documentation, what's the risk that you would not be able to access that information? And then we'll talk about seagulls in a second as well, because in some cases you don't have the documentation, a vendor does, which means you're kind of held ransom. And keep in mind that there are a number of tools out there that can either create automatic documentation or help you manage and maintain your documentation or both in some cases. And by documentation, yes, I include credentials in this. So is there a way, is there a way that you've got that's a standard way for you to maintain and manage your documentation. So I'm going to talk about Seagull support a couple of times or Seagull vendors. And this is, it actually could be called anybody, but it was originally a Seagull manager is the first term or first way I heard the term uh, about 20 years ago or so. But it's basically somebody who drops by, makes a lot of noise, drops a lot of, mm, and then flies away, leaving you to clean up. And in a lot of cases, especially for smaller organizations or smaller IT organizations, you're going to have a vendor or two who you will bring in to do those jobs that are either required because it goes above and beyond your internal IT folks skill set or your workload. And they may give you some documentation, but you don't know enough to either maintain it or to hand the documentation off to somebody else, even though the seagull's done and they're gone, and the only time they're gonna come back to you is if they bill you for a lot more money. So you need to watch out for that. So if it's traditional, inf yeah, excuse me, uh, if it's a traditional situation where you don't have the skills, you don't have the money, but it's an on-demand relationship is when we talk about seagulls. So here's a situation we ran into with a client, and this was where we replace we were replacing a seagull and the seagull had the credentials. 
and they, for all purposes, they were in a, they were in a state of denial in terms of needing to share those credentials or share the documentation uh, with us or the client, even though it was clearly software and materials that were owned by the client. And the problem is, is that whether the seagull would have been a bad actor, which I would have called them in this case, or let's say the seagull went out of business, which we've also seen in situations, especially on uh, domain name registrations, that's been the Achilles. Whenever we talk to new clients, that's one of the first things we say is, do you have your domain administration credentials? Do you have those? Because that's been the one that's the toughest to figure out and reverse engineer. For all purposes in this case, the seagull held, held the client hostage. And we were not able to do an effective, we actually ended up having to do an Office 365 cutover for about 80 or 90 mailboxes. We had to do them in 12 hours. That wasn't pretty. And that was, this was about eight or nine years ago. You know, it's not ransomware, but it sure seems like it, doesn't it? So what do you need to do? So first of all, don't view this as a, you have to solve everything with one solution because that's the way it never gets done. You can kind of create it as you're gonna work, you're gonna start moving into it. So you create a secure framework. Now, what's a framework? Honestly, I've seen documentation in Excel files. I've seen documentation in OneNote documents. I've seen documentation in SharePoint sites. I've seen documentations in Teams. I've seen documentations in Google Docs. I've seen documentation in all of these things. Here's the thing, I don't care. Now, there are a number of sites, there's a number of services that can do this in a very, very secure encrypted way. And if you can, you should use those. And I know a bunch of them, I can help you with them, some Google searches. We happen to use uh, some stuff called IT Glue and My Glue that we use for both documentation that we share with the client. So we both kind of mesh as far as they can see our documentation, we can see theirs, so on and so forth. But by doing that, we basically now have a framework that here's where all the doc documentation goes. Because one of the other issues I've seen over the years has been where you have multiple sets of documentation. So here's the documentation we have for this project. Here's the documentation we have for this project. This is over here, this is over here. You want to standardize, you want to solidify. Even if the format's not the same, you at least want the place to be the same. And you want to make it so that uh, it's constantly updated. How does that happen? By not making it a huge project. So you create some standards, you can cr you create it so it's secure, it's gonna work. It may not be perfect, but it's gonna get you started. One of my recent videos, you know, you, you've, I'm sure you've heard the term uh, KISS, keep it simple, stupid. I also like SIS, start it simple, stupid. Because those are the types of projects that you have a better chance of being able to get done in addition to your current workload. So make it a secondary project, set small monthly goals. This month, we're going to, we're going to document our uh, Office 365 settings. Next month, we're going to make sure that all of the domain registration and the web hosting credentials are set up. The following month, we're going to set up where do we have all of our uh, warranty replacement records. So on and so forth. So every month you're moving stuff a little bit forward. And then anytime you have a project estimate, add 10% of that project estimate time for documentation creation. And then start building in some small projects that are going to go as far as anytime you do updates to this, that you're also going to update the documentation. And it's one of those where the more you buy into the it's now part of your job. And this is especially true if you have uh, multiple people in your IT support, that this is the expectation. This is what we do. This is who we are. You know, uh, if you ever get a chance, I forget the author of the book, but Atomic Habits. You know, one of the best ways to quit smoking is to just convince yourself you're not a smoker anymore. This is not what smokers do. So it's kind of, this is, this is how we doc, we are documenters. So we will document so on and so forth. And if you start doing that, and if you build into that, and that is what you become, it's going to be much easier. It's going to be much easier. And don't be your own seagull. What I mean by that is don't make the document, you want to be careful, you don't make the documentation so everybody has access to it, but you make it so the documentation is accessible if you're on vacation, you know, or if you're sick, or, or God forbid worse. You want to make it so that 
it is not you're not the only person who's sitting there looking at this stuff okay we have the obligatory someone likes us so here's the second one here's the second topic we've got so how busy are you is your IT and this is actually general business to disruption and what I mean by that is any kind of disruption you know usually for stuff like for, for presentations that are talking about IT someone's going to come in and we're going to talk about we're going to talk about cybersecurity because we don't want you to be disrupted by ransomware we don't want you to be disrupted um, uh, by uh, a power outage we don't want to be disrupted no that's fine those are all great those are absolutely critical we're talking any kind of disruption anything where there's a lack of documentation where there's critical people where if something happens to something or someone there's going to be a failure or a cost to the organization single points of failure because people and organizations especially don't pay enough attention to this because sometimes we just look at the technical aspects we don't look at the business aspects here's the case where you want to look at basically a combination where a failure in anything would result in harm damage and cost to the organization single points of failure so we had an example here we had a, uh, a client who had about 100 employees including some publicly critical stuff we'll say uh, and when we took over we went into the server room and there in the server room literally hanging from the ceiling was a network cable and a home linksys router that was suspended by that data cable and then plugged in and it was hanging so it was a pinata and the entire organization which would have included some critical services was completely dependent upon that device if that device was knocked off if the cable you know can disconnected and plugged and, and of course it was just plugged right into the wall the entire organization would be offline and there was no documentation of it there were many other cables coming from the ceiling and so it was one of those where as soon as we saw it we obviously made some significant changes to it but this is one where that one little piece of equipment that cost you know 39.95 at best buy would have been responsible for if it had gone bad been knocked off whatever you would be looking at a couple thousand dollars an hour easily of damage and no good documentation of where the problem was no good definition and something that for 150 bucks we would have had a wonderful solution that would have been much more professional much better and not hanging from the freaking ceiling okay once we knew it easy to fix without knowing it not so much so but it can be anything let's say for example in your organization that there is a process that they your manufacturing organization and every Tuesday uh, there's a process that goes by where the orders are prioritized on what gets shipped and only Susan knows how to do this and Susan gets sick what are you going to do what are you going to do how, how are you going to deal with it so anything can be a single point of failure and it isn't necessarily something where you know exactly how to fix it how to prevent it how to do whatever but if you don't even know what that risk is that puts you in a bit of a problem and here's another one where with with seagulls seagulls are single points of failure they don't necessarily understand your business you're the internal IT folk you know what is needed for your organization to work well you know what Susan or whatever name I used earlier needs to do or you should which will get us to that third topic so this is something that internally you add value because of your knowledge with these processes with these systems and how they relate to the business needs so single points of failures are great to bring seagulls in but not as the content expert this is where internal IT or any honestly anybody depending upon the level you're talking about can come in and be uh, useful so when we talk about risk what are we talking about 
and, and I love simplification of stuff, okay? So if the, if, if the risk comes to, comes to play, what's the impact? Is it significant? You don't have to have an exact dollar, but on a scale from one to 10. And then how probable is that issue in terms of it happening? So if the impact is, is huge, but the probability is probably not gonna happen, okay, maybe not as big of a deal, but the reverse, it is not huge, but it happens all the time. The combination of those two really gives you an idea of what the risk is you're dealing with as far as a single point of failure. But then, what about mitigation? And mitigation can take the form of two things. One is to eliminate the risk, is to essentially have a second Susan so that two people know how to do this and we make sure they're not, they don't take vacation at the same time. In which case, we've more or less mitigated the risk. What if they both get sick or quit? But we've more or less mitigated the risk. The second is, what are we going to do if that happens? Uh, in the case of our pinata, the pinata situation could be something along the lines of, well, huh, what if we have a second router nearby and that second router we can use to replace it in case the pinata one breaks? Okay, we're still going to have outage, but the outage is going to be very, very quick to, to, to fix. So if you think about it in terms of time as being a stream, and you've got right here at this point in the stream is the present, and upstream is, is the past and downstream is the future, where does the solution lie? If it's upstream, you're preventing, you're proactive. If it's downstream, it's reactive. But if it's immediately downstream, it's okay. So what's your risk? Impact times probability divided by mitigation costs. That's gonna give you an idea to rank, ooh, to rank something in terms of how important is it for you to fix it and how realistic it is for you to fix it. So what do you need to do? First of all, you need to do what we call a tabletop meeting. A tabletop meeting is where you get a bunch of people together who can answer the questions behind this and you literally just go through single points of failure. By the way, you do this virtually now. And you literally just go through, what if this breaks? What if this breaks? What if this breaks? You assign costs to the outages, approximate costs. It could be one to 10. Identify the single points of failure. You learn before the failure and it's not in depth. The solutions may be in depth, but the identification is not. So you go through this process because you can do a single point of failure analysis, a SPOF meeting. You could do this in an hour or two. You may get through everything, you may not. And if everybody who's in that meeting says, hey, this was valuable, you do another one. Okay, so this is a process that you can do. It's not hard. It's not hard at all. And you can identify things that are really useful for you and your organization. You know what would be helpful is if somebody put together a worksheet and keep in mind, my Excel skills, well, you're gonna, you see them right now. So this is a worksheet we put together and all we did was we created some validation lists. And I'm sorry if the screen is small. We'll, we're gonna show you how, to, how you can get a copy of this, by the way. And we've got two types, we've got people and we've got things. And essentially you identify the item. And by the way, people is roughly the same thing, just dealing with, wait for it, people. And then we have types and there's a drop down, so we can specify it's Wi-Fi, it's printers, it's 365, and you can add or take away to your validation list. You can customize this yourself. Then what's the vulnerability? What do you name it? Who reported it? Who's taking responsibility? There's your list of your people. Does it impact your clients? That may or may not be important. Is it under warranty? In this case, we're talking about things. People aren't under warranty, they should be. Is it supported by the vendor? And then we get into the three things. What's the impact? And we basically just put in five, three, and one, severe, medium, and annoyance. What's the probability? 10, eight, five, and one. Imminent, likely, potential, or unlikely. And that's what's the prevention or mitigation cost? 
huge, significant, needs budget, minor, cheap fix. And automatically what we'll do is we'll then figure out what the risk is. And if you put these together, all enough of these together, you'll see which ones have the highest risk. And the highest risk includes taking into account how much it would cost. So what's the highest risk? Well, an asteroid hitting is right up there. Well, that's not very likely, though. And, but you could have a, a significant issue that it was just, it's, yeah, it's, it's out there, but boy, it'll cost so much to, re, to replace that or fix that. This is especially true if you've got organizations that are using really, really out-of-date software. You use really, really out-of-date software, the, the risk may be high, uh, the chance is medium that we're going to run into issues or it's going to break and there's no support for it, whatever, but the cost is huge. So let's, let's actually go through that one real quick. So we're talking our ERP app. It's an application, which I think we have. Uh, I didn't put application, we'll call it operating system. What's the vul vulnerability app, obsolete. And then reported by, and we'll say Bob, does it have a client impact? No, this doesn't. It is not under warranty. Actually, this one would. It's ERP. Duh. And there is no vendor support. Uh, the impact is severe. If this goes bad, we're completely dead in the water. What's the probability? I'm going to say it's potential. And what is the cost? Huge. Because we'd have to completely redo everything we do. Okay, that's a 2.5. So... Are we going to do that? Well, actually, it's it's not. It's unlikely. Now it's a 0.5. So by making some judgment calls, and by the way, these are not technical judgment calls necessarily. Some cases, it's a business judgment call to see whether or not that, what is the cost especially. Okay. And then, as far as ranking, do you have... Is there, what do you do in case that happens? Is there zero fallback, collaboration, vendor assistance, delegate? These are just things that, well, what are you going to do if this happens? What would the solutions be? And then how soon? If something happens, how soon would you find the, pro would the problem hit you? Well, an ERP system will probably be immediate. And then notes. Okay. And the, the people works pretty much the same. Now, here's the thing. If you use a collaboration tool like Teams, you can set up a Teams and share this in Teams as a tab. You just go up, create a new tab, make it an Excel file, and put this here. And everybody who's a member of that team can go and add data to this worksheet. So everybody can put in their two cents. And again, you, you did it with a management team or whatever the proper thing is. So you've right now created a, a, a communication tool so that everybody can communicate what their concerns are about single points of failure. Because how many times something breaks and someone says, you know, I always wondered what would happen if that thing broke. This type of tool, and honestly, if you don't use the tool, use something. You'll, you can see this isn't rocket science. But use something to gather the thoughts of the people who know the business to identify where these single points of failure are, to assign some kind of risk valuation on it, and then can prioritize whether or not it's worth doing anything. And especially if you're in IT, if you bring management in on this conversation, they can then see a, an actual definition of why this is important. And if they sit back and they go, well, you know, yeah, this is an old version of the uh, operating system and all that, but I don't feel like making the, making the change. And then you guys get hit with some kind of security issue because of this was out of date. I mean, I hate to say you can do the I told you so, but you can do the I told you so. And not in the, you know, ha ha, I told you so, but oh boy, I guess, you know, when we said this was uh, probability was unlikely, we I guess we should have said it was, it, you know, whatever. But the nice thing is about these types of situations, and believe me, I've been in them, is this is a great way to get other people in on your nightmares, to get them to understand better 
why you want to do things the way you want. And you don't, you don't sell this. You don't basically say, hey, this is critical. Why don't you see this? This is what, no. They see this, they see the ranking, and they choose whether or not they want to follow up on this, whether or not they want to deal with this. You've done your job. You've told them where the alligators are. You've told them the likelihood, the seriousness, and all of that kind of fun stuff. And they see it in a way that's measurable, that's repeatable, that's communicated not in a heat of moment or the like. And that's, that's critical. Because if, if a business owner is sitting there and you're coming to them with a $100,000 fix to a problem that, yeah, it's serious, but how likely is it or whatever, they may be looking at other expenses or lack of profits and going, we can't afford that. All you're hearing is, no, we, we're not going to do it. So you're like, you guys don't care about us at all. You've communicated properly. You've, you've indicated what's going on. You've identified it. You've put it in a way that's, that's not threatening nothing. You've done your job. And the challenge is, is that as an organization moves forward, the more of these types of communications you can have, the more trusted you're going to be because you're not, you're, you're part of the team. You're trying to sell, uh, you know, excuse me, you're not trying to sell the latest you know, seagull or anything along those lines. Okay. So we will have a, a link at the end of this. If you register with us, we'll actually send you this worksheet. You can use it. It's quite honestly, in an hour or two, you can probably make it yourself. It brings us to the third. And in some ways, in some ways, it's the hardest, depending upon what your soft skills are. But in some ways, it's the most critical as well. By the way, again, anybody have any questions, just throw them in the chat. And that's dealing with management. So one of the most important things when we take a look at any arm or branch of an organization is that whatever the business process is, which is how an organization deals with goods and services to their client base, does any of the supporting items, including IT, does it parallel the business process? And if not, why not? And in a lot of cases, IT is an afterthought. And in some ways, that's our fault, but not always. I mean, I remember I was uh, with one company, and they had just made this big deal announcement uh, internally, and they had about 300 employees or so, about this new product line. And they had this wonderful flowchart, excuse me, which basically showed all of the product development standards. You know, so it went from uh, R&D, and then it went through manufacturing, and then they did a standard uh, 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 test breakout, and they figured out this, that, and the other thing. They went through marketing, blah, blah, blah. Oh, look, they're ready to go to market. And I looked at it, and I started laughing. And I just went to the COO, and I said, so where's IT? There were incredible requirements in terms of technology and software operating, you know, you know equipment uh, uh, out on the shop floor, receiving uh, instructions from CAD stations, all of that kind of fun stuff. And there was nothing in the process anywhere that talked about any software development whatsoever. Now, remember I said I was crotchety, arrogant old geek? Well, I was not as old, but I was just as crotchety and even more arrogant probably back then. And I'll give the guy credit. Uh, he, he treated me relatively well, but, but the challenge was, was that how do I communicate that the project will go much better if we're included from the beginning on some level or another. Thankfully, the COO actually uh, recognized the error immediately and we worked to fix it and the project worked, went well and we you know, released on time and blah, blah, blah. But it really illustrated because we had a decent relationship. Now, this was back oh, when I was about 30. So this literally was about 30 years ago because I am old. Um, but it's still true today. When I talk to IT directors, 
there's still that issue, especially with smaller organizations, and especially when the product is removed from the IT services. So if you're talking about, you know, manufacturing, or if you're talking about healthcare, you're talking about whatever, where the primary product is in a box or it is a person delivering their service, their knowledge. And so you have these technology layers or a couple step, steps behind. There's a tendency to forget they're there. And yeah, there you can start with the nobody appreciates me, you know, uh, boo hoo, woe is me. And I get that. But it's also a, I could be so much more effective I should say IT, could be so much more effective if we were in the game. But here's the thing, management, if they don't know that now, there's nothing you can do directly to teach them that. So what do we do? Well, if you're an internal IT, you probably run into this situation. You've gone to management and you've said, Sky is falling, sky is falling, sky is falling. Management's like, eh, whatever. And then this consultant comes in out of nowhere, charges $5,000. Here's his PowerPoint presentation, and the first slide is, the sky is falling. And manager breaks into tears, starts applauding wildly, jumps up on the table, throws more money at the consultant, looks at you with scorn and go, why couldn't you tell me that? I'm exaggerating, but not by much. I've been in both situations. I've been in the situation where, as the employee, a consultant comes in out on the outside and says something I've been saying for all the time. And I've also been in the situation where I come in and make a casual statement about something, and, I'm, and the management acts as if it's the first time I've ever told. And then the IT person pulls me aside later and goes, you know, I've been saying that for two years. Thanks for making it happen. There's a disconnect. And the disconnect is obvious that, but, but the disconnect isn't obvious in terms of the source, the cause, or the cure. That if management doesn't understand, doesn't value IT, then they're only going to see the pain, the frustration, and the cost. Because that's what humans normally see. If you are out there looking to survive, you know, you're, you're basically in the, the, the jungles and all of Africa or whatever, and you're early man or woman and you see two things you see a tiger over there and you see a nice fruit tree over there your nature is going to pay attention to the tiger you're going to pay attention to the fear to the threat to the risk to the danger because that's how you live longer the same is true for human beings so by and large they're not going to be looking for the you know they're not looking for the the warm and fuzzies so here's the thing we need to do. And if there's anything you take away from today, this is it. You have to, you have to create a relationship with management that isn't based on the immediate need, the immediate disaster, the immediate failure, the immediate requirement, the immediate anything. Preferably, not even based on IT. If I asked you to give an elevator pitch for your company, for your organization, not your IT, how good of a pitch would it be? And if your answer is, oh, it's okay, I mean, I know we do, then you're part of the problem. Because how are you going to understand how to take the IT services that your organization has and turn them into improvements for the business part of the organization? How are you going to do that if you don't even understand what the business part of the organization is? As I said, Simplex IT, we're a managed service provider. So we go in historically and traditionally, and spoiler alert, there's an exception to this, and it's a big one. The managed service provider historically goes to organizations and says, we can replace your existing internal IT people, and we can do it better, and we can do it more efficient, and we can do it for less money. And in many cases, that answer was absolutely true. The exception to that where we can't is when the internal IT people know 
so much about the technology. Oh, wait, no, not the technology, the business that they can effectively use technology to the benefit of the organization much better than I ever will. I have some great technicians here, some real losers. No, just kidding. We have some great technicians here, but they don't spend 40 hours at a particular client site. And my technicians, the odds are I've got a technician that has more skill on any particular topic than you. Because I got so many of them. I've got seniors, I got juniors, I got whatever. You know, SQL specialist, anything, whatever. And my point is, is that if you're looking at a pure skill standpoint, I outnumber you. But where you beat the tar out of me is you know your organization, or at least you should. So you need to understand, and you need to understand what your organization does, how they do it, all that, and communicate with management on that basis. And don't go to them and say, I'd love to learn more. I mean, actually, in some cases, that might work, depending upon the personality of the management. But you want to go to it from the standpoint of have discussions with management, understand the business, understand the business well enough so that you can actually start looking at the technology with a whole new perspective about how technology can bring value or mitigate risks or whatever you want to talk about. But how can IT be the hero for your organization? IT is a hero. It's kind of weird, isn't it? Because we're usually the cost. We're usually the pain in the butt. Have you tried turning it off and turning it back on again? How can you be the hero? How can you find ways to make the salesman more productive on the road? How can you make it so that stuff is going to be more secure without spending a ton of money? How can you make it so that they're less vulnerable when Susie's on vacation? Those are the things I can't do necessarily. But you can and this is also where you can start building a relationship with management by saying, hey, I just read in the newsletter that we're going to be opening up a branch over here. I was thinking, what if we did this? Or I know that we've got these trade shows coming up. Do we want to do some video conferencing or whatever? But where you start talking and engaging with management about making him or her the hero through the use of technology. And then in that, you start coaching management on IT. Because in those type of engagements, those types of discussions, they might be more interested in learning about what a VPN is and why it's important when our salesmen go to these trade shows, because they may go to a trade show in 2024 or something. Or there may be more interest in terms of, well, yeah, we can actually create a, a website where it's real easy for someone to download a request for a book or something along those lines, whatever. But now you're talking about things to do that aren't pie in the sky. I just read this and I have no idea what the business does, but I just saw this, this will be cool. No, you know what the business does. You know what the business challenges are. You know what the competition is doing. You know, we could do something just as good and it wouldn't cost that much because we could go it this way. That sounds good. And it's going to be much easier than to have those single points of failure conversations. So they sort of link together, don't they? And it's so much easier than to say, look, we've got this stuff documented so Susie can take off on vacation because we've got the procedures down pat. Because of your involvement and your engagement, you make it much, much tougher for people like me to come in and say, I want to replace you guys because I can do it faster and cheaper and more effectively because I don't know the company as well as you do. And I won't based on this. So kind of wrapping up. We've got these three situations. We've got the documentation. We've got the vulnerability as far as single points of failure and the like. And we've got building a relationship between IT and management. Those are the three things. And these are all doable. These are all things that you can go out and you can start doing in some way, shape, or form. Start building into those processes. Don't treat them as they have to be done in humongous projects or big class or whatever. You can just start walking. You can start crawling before you start running, before you start flying.
But here's the thing, IT is more than just the blinking lights. There are so many people out there that are just concerned, yep, the server's running fine. Yep, we got plenty of disk space. Yep, we got good backups. Those are great. Those are also commodity skills. Those are the ones that I'm, that outsourcing is going to be cheaper. I don't care what you, how good you are on blinking lights and the like. Ultimately, you will be commoditized. But bringing value, that's not a commodity. So, how can you do that? I don't know if you just felt a chill in the air because we're just now going to switch. So here's the thing that we talk about. And by the way, there's more good stuff to come, but we offer a service called co-managed IT services. And this is a true partnership between organization, the internal organizations with IT departments. It's really a relationship between the internal IT department and ours, where you become an extension of our IT technicians, and we become an extension of yours through a sharing of all the, the software, the tools, the methodologies, the portals, what we call stamps, uh, and working together, okay? Um, and what we'd offer is we'd love to have a, a, a call, a blueprint conversation, but here's how this works. So what we're offering is a 45 minute virtual meeting and all of the meeting except for the last five minutes is about your situation. I want to talk about what you've got as far as what your status quo is. I want to talk about your documentation strategies. I want to talk about your single points of failure. I want to talk about your relationship and management. I don't want to talk about comments. I don't want to talk about what we do. I don't want to talk about our services. I want to learn about you. And I want to help you move forward with this stuff because even if you choose not to use us now, you'll remember that conversation and use us later. And we're in this for the long run. Um, so during this conversation, it's all about that. And at the end of the time, end of that meeting, you'll have a list of action items for documentation. You'll know how to identify the vulnerabilities. I'll talk a lot about the soft skills for using these things or for doing these. Uh, we'll also give you template documents, including the worksheet uh, that I showed you. And I'll get you a copy. Actually, I'll get you both copies. I'll get you a copy of the I Don't Want Your Job book and also a uh, CEO survival guide or two for your uh, boss, your CEO, because it's written for that person who doesn't want to become a geek but needs to understand better the IT. And it's full of actual metaphors and ways to approach and to communicate some of the technology. If you connect with me on LinkedIn, if you're not already, uh, and watch our videos. This is how I talk. This is how I communicate. And it's, it's worked well for me, and you can use this for your own situations. And, and here's the other cool thing, but we'll also throw in We've got online cybersecurity training, which is about an hour and a half class. I'll give you 100 licenses so you can, you can have 100 employees take the class for teaches them about phishing attacks, uh, you know, when to sign up for wireless, all that kind of fun stuff. And you'll be able to track whether they've taken the course. Uh, up to 100 employees. And then we've also got a thing called Bigger Brains, which has about 170 online courses that are ranged from an hour to three or four hours. Uh, there's like 15 or so courses on on office uh, on uh, personal management training or uh, time management, uh, uh, professional communication, all of that kind of fun stuff. If you go to simplex-it.com slash training, you can actually sign up for a free Windows 10 course. Uh, and you can also see what the, uh, uh, what the um, uh, curriculum, how, what the 170 courses are. We'll give you that. We will not add or market to any of these 100. We don't need a credit card. You're not agreeing to anything. You're not anything. We will give these to you. You give us a list of first name, last name, email addresses. We will only use them to sign up for these two services. That's it. Okay? So this is not a hard sell. But after the meeting, then we'd like to talk for a few minutes about what role, if any, Simplex IT can have. We'll introduce COMITs, and if it's a good fit, we'll talk about it, okay? And if it's not a good fit, because what I tell everybody, I do a lot of coaching on this, this co-managed thing, I literally wrote the book on it for other MSPs, and I speak on this all the time. Um, but one of the things that we do is, is we basically say that a, a, the only thing worse than a good co-managed uh, opportunity getting away is a bad co-managed opportunity signing up. If this doesn't work, we don't want to force it. It's not worth it. Normally we do 750 for all this stuff because all the training and all of that kind of stuff. However, what a shock. It is free. 
Yay. So what's the catch? Um, we've only got five spots. And part of that is because we only have five of the license, the amounts of licenses we're giving away. Plus we want to, we're already booked as far as projects go and all of that kind of fun stuff. So comments at simplex-it.com if, if this is of interest to you. And here's the thing. Uh, there's no sales pitch until the end. I've already covered that part. Only if it makes sense. And if it's not useful, tell me. Tell me your charity. I'll give you 50 bucks to that charity. And just go to uh, the consultation, comments at simplex-it. I'll give you this book. And here's the email again. So what do you got? You've got a list of action items for documentation. You know how to identify the vulnerabilities and keep track of them. And you've got some suggestions for dealing with management. And you've got some great tools as far as to educate and train the employees within your organization. That's what we're giving you. Just as an add-on, I'm giving you some recommended reading to get. And uh, we will, if you sign up, I'll also give you the presentation or send the presentation to you. Uh, this is actually from the fall last year. These are all, well, not all, uh, two or three are not. Uh, two or three are actually internal IT, Simplex IT folks. The rest of them are actual internal IT uh, people at our various, some of our various Comets clients who came in for our training uh, this last year. But with that, I say fairly well. <laughs>